I was wondering what Jim thought of these play-by-play announcers that he's worked with and if there are any stories he could share about the following. Charlie Platt, Michael St. John, the late Rick Stewart, and Bill Mercer. (laughs) Well, wait a minute. Now, Charlie Platt, I actually... Now somebody's going to turn up video, but I don't think I got the chance to work with because I don't think he was doing well. I I was never in his territories while he was doing the TV. I don't believe he wasn't there in 89 when you made the appearances, right? I, I, but see, we didn't do their TV taping. We just did a couple house shows. So I don't even know if he would have been there. See what I'm saying? I don't know if he'd have been there, whatever the fuck. Um, Obviously, Bill Mercer, I've worked with in, in, he was a very nice man. He still is a nice man. Is he, I think he's still around and he's like 90. Yeah, he is uh, a very nice man. He had that serious delivery and the seriousness and, and drama in his voice. He wasn't the best in the world at calling a match uh, scientifically, but he was a, a, a very trusted fatherly sounding announcer <laughs> for the times when people weren't so discerning about what the exact name of the hole was. Remember one time he said, uh, uh, fucking uh, Nord, the barbarian was from Norway, right? No, it was, uh, uh, Nord for, the, for, for, well, no, no, from Norwegia. Yeah, but he's supposed to be from Norway, but he says he's Nord is from Norwegia. <laughs> that, and, uh, <laughs> And, but but you know but he actually was a local television reporter and is on some of the documentaries he reported locally on the Kennedy assassination in Dallas in 1963. Bill Mercer. Yeah, he'd been around forever. So <clears throat> anyway, he was he was fun. To, I never did color with him. And once again, somebody will find one one day I did right. But uh, but working with him as far as doing interviews and etc. Very nice man. Uh, who else was on the list? Um, Michael St. John and the late Rick Stewart. Uh, Rick Stewart. I, I knew, uh, I don't know whether I did, he did the TV in Kansas city and I don't know whether but we probably did at the point in time where Crockett bought it. But at, at one point or another, I'd, I'd been around him and I don't, didn't get to work with him more than a time or two. I think, I think when we went to Kansas city, those times when I Kansas city myself, I uh, believe that's when he was doing the TV. So, you know, but yeah, uh, once again, briefly, but Michael St. John, not only did I uh, obviously see him on television because he did Nashville for Nick Goulas and you would see Nick's to see, that's the thing. You could leave Louisville in those days and you could drive three hours south and be in an entirely different wrestling territory with entirely different local television that you couldn't see in Louisville. And then you could keep driving another three hours farther south and be back in the same territory you started in where they saw none of the Nashville shit and just saw Memphis like we saw here in Louisville. But the, theirs was live. It was fucking biz- And then if you went four hours the other way, you'd be in southeastern territory, and they wouldn't know what you were fucking talking about. We watched this fucking wrestling over here. So that's that's how cool it was, for one thing. But Michael St. John then came to work for Jerry Jarrett, and not only uh, did the arena stuff and did some of the stand-ups on the, on the shows and and – did different types of announcing for Jared, but he also was the guy that when we went to do the Georgia show in 1983, Georgia wrestling superstars shot in Chattanooga, Tennessee, by the way, <laughs> at the studios of WRCB channel three. Um, but he was the announcer. So he's the, he's that d- dramatic Barney Fife physique, but with the, you know, the mustache and the black hair, dramatic delivery for that six weeks of hilarity, eight weeks of hilarity that we fucking perpetrated on the public. And, and so the, I got to work with him. That was the first time I just had the whole show to myself because Dundee told me I'm managing all the heels all six of them that's on the goddamn heel roster. Uh, so I'm just out there almost every segment. Dundee's like, just go fuck with Michael St. John. Right. <laughs> so, and that's what we, we were just making that shit up as we went along. None of us said, I, well, Michael, it was probably the only person on the show that had actually been the, the lead announcer of something reputable at that point. 
Uh, so that was that was fun, and he was the announcer. He was holding the mic when when uh, Terry Taylor anal raped Bobby Fulton on Chattanooga TV. <laughs> Remember, I've told you about that. Yeah, the video's on YouTube. Yes, <laughs> I think it is. It, it, but it's also it, it's actually available. I, I don't actually. It it might not be available. I'm restocking Jim Cornette Rookie Year Volume One. No, it's on Volume Two. If you get Volume Two. Uh, of Jim Cornette's rookie year from jimcornette.com. It'll be up November 1st, I'll reckon. Uh, we had beaten them up. Frank Morell, the angel, and, and Jerry Novak, the bounty hunter, had beaten them up and torn their jackets in half, just like it had been done to the Fabs in Memphis. Only in, in front of, in Memphis, they did it in front of 5,000 people <laughs> or at the Coliseum or 300,000 people on TV. We did it in Chattanooga in the studio in front of 50 people with, I think, probably about 1,500 watching. Anyway, um, Bobby Fulton, is, and then Frank Morell gave him a pile driver. Bobby Fulton. So he's selling his neck. He's bent over the announcer's desk, holding both his hands over his head. And he's looking, trying to look, turn his head to the camera so you can see him. So he kind of looks like he's in a homemade porn anyway. And he's turning his head to the camera unnaturally. So you can see the pain on his face as he sells his neck, right? He's bent over the desk. Michael St. John stands up behind the desk. Terry Taylor goes up and he's trying to comfort his partner, Bobby Fulton and yell about what happened, but it looks like he's butt fucking him right over the fucking desk and Bobby's selling <laughs> and Terry's yelling about what's for like a minute and a half. It's, it's the most amazing display of male on male eroticism ever broadcast on, on local television. <laughs> and, and actually it, it, it was shown Okay, count these up. It was shown in Knoxville, Chattanooga, Macon, Georgia, Augusta, Georgia, and Columbus, Georgia. And probably that's about it <laughs> on local television the following weekend. <laughs> and I think they should somehow retroactively fine Terry Taylor for simulating anal male-to-male sex on his partner. <laughs> <laughs> right after, right after, probably the Saturday morning cartoons and cooking shows had gone off the air at that point. 